Well, hello and welcome back to the Cambridge Institute of Marketing Practice. And welcome to a new series of masterclasses. In this unique playlist, we journey briskly through the history of marketing from early human existence to the 21st century. Oh yes, I know what you're thinking. The very idea that marketing has a long history, going back thousands of years, comes as a surprise, doesn't it? Well, surely marketing is a very modern invention, a creature of TV and internet, and can only be done by trained professionals with high-speed broadband connections, no? Well, not so. True, commercial marketing has today reached a level of sophistication undreamed of by our ancestors. And true, in the modern era, career marketing is mostly done by professionals. But marketing has been done very well indeed, intuitively, for a very long time by amateurs, by untrained, inexperienced individuals who in retrospect may safely be labelled marketers. From dawn to dusk, year after year, for thousands of years on every continent, our uneducated ancestors have used basic marketing tools to build brands. Since we climbed down from the trees, every single one of us humans has successfully managed the personal brand bestowed on us at birth, what we call brand me. And our ancestors have equally successfully built third-party brands, which we for convenience call brand X, and not a consultant in sight, no television nor social media either. All marketers, past and present, build brands. That is basically what we do. But much as we are surrounded by noisy brands, for-profit and not-for-profit brands, political brands, charity brands, private brands, and public brands, much as we daily witness a vast array of marketing tools at work, and easy as it is to think that without those tools, every marketer is lost and no brand built, our ancestors were not lost at all. Building brands was their bag. There is much to be learned from the marketing activities of our forebears. The great Greek philosopher Aristotle would agree. If you would understand anything, observe its beginnings and its development, he said. Well, Aristotle didn't know anything about marketing, but in order to understand marketing and in order to practice marketing effectively, we too would do well to observe its beginnings and its development. So let's do just that as best we can in 60 minutes or so. Okay. Marketing does have a very long history, but fortunately it can be divided into two parts, from prehistory to the late 1800s and from the late 1800s to today. In the first stage, 12,000 BC or thereabouts, to about 1890, marketing does its work intuitively, instinctively. Even before the invention of money, our hairy ancestors learned to control and benefit from the exchange process, the way by which one human exchanges goods and favors with another. To control it, exchange, they gradually learned how to create the perception of value in an object or an activity and store the value created sustainably in a name, what we now label a brand. So for thousands of years, brands were created and built by inexperienced amateurs. Marketing wasn't studied or taught. Marketing wasn't even called marketing yet, and a brand was something burned onto the flanks of Western cattle. But brands were built, marketing was done, intuitively and instinctively. In stage two, Marketing gets its label, changes gear, moves out of the intuitive, and becomes methodical, scientific. From the late 19th century, the idea of layering method over intuition begins to take shape in commerce. Great brands are born, Kellogg's, Coca-Cola, Cadbury, IBM. But methodical marketing was developed, and its edge truly honed, on the banks of the Ohio River by the Procter & Gamble Company, known today as P&G. Procter & Gamble launched the first mass-market branded in 1879, with the heavily advertised slogan, 99 and 4400 percent pure, it floats. The company has moved on. Now a giant corporation, P&G has worldwide sales of over 70 billions of dollars, manages hundreds of brands for profit, lots of it, and has grown to be the acknowledged center of global marketing best practice. In this modern era, marketing has come to be studied, taught, practiced, with increasing sophistication, molded to fit the needs of an evolving society, and deployed to exploit the opportunities for wealth creation in an ever more connected world. But marketing still exists for one purpose, to build brands. Of course, we can't do justice to 12,000 years of marketing practice, not in a 60-minute playlist, but we do gain some important insights on our journey. 
In just a handful of short masterclasses, we imagine primitive marketing in the cave and are introduced to P&G. Surprisingly, we find our two heroes, Fred the Caveman Marketer and P&G, have much in common. They both understand the fundamental role of marketing as the way to control the human exchange process. They both recognize marketing as the toolkit for creating value and storing it in a brand. For Fred and Proctor, marketing exists for one purpose, to build and sustain brands as valuable assets. Separated by a mere 12,000 years, they do the business in the same way and explode a few myths. They don't build brands by spending money wildly, making people laugh, selling the brand cheap or giving it away, mining big data, harnessing artificial intelligence, exploiting social media and surfing the internet. They do build brand value with a simple formula, by differentiating a brand from its competitors. They differentiate their brands in just two ways, in what the brand is, its product, its service, and even more importantly, in what they say about it. They craft a brand simply by offering a different product and saying that it is different. They don't obsess about price or the medium of communication, how and where the message is delivered. They do obsess about the message itself, that it differentiates and how it differentiates in whatever affordable medium presents itself. Word of mouth in the cave community and on TV and on social media today. For Fred and Proctor both, it's not where you say it's different, it's that you say it's different and how. So, today as yesterday, marketing is and remains the toolkit with which a manager controls the process by which values are exchanged and creates value which is stored and sustained in a brand. Value is stored in a brand which is different and in a brand which says it's different. The brand is an asset and the value stored belongs to its owner. We will in other playlists and other masterclasses elaborate on the opportunities that modern marketing offers for institutions, managers and brand owners. And we will explore in greater depth the ways in which P&G exploits those opportunities today as they have for some 90 years. But it all starts thousands of years ago. Please join us on the surprisingly short journey from cave to Cincinnati.